Hey, what's going on guys, and welcome back to another Minecraft Bedrock tutorial. Now today, before me, I have the world's smartest super smelter, and not just a super smelter that can smelt items. No, 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 this smelter is a lot smarter than that. Like most smelters, you would simply put in all your items, so whether you're smelting iron or diamond, and the top chest is where, of course, you're going to be plopping in all your items that you're going to be smelting with, so all your fuel. So once you have loaded up the system, all you have to do is start the entire thing up, and it'll send the minecart away, and it's going to start filling up all the furnaces for them to start fueling. It is also going to send a hopper minecart here, and it's going to be going back and forth. Now, as you can see, all the redstone lines are flashing, and this is doing a bunch of stuff. What this is doing is it is making sure that there is the exact same amount of fuel in every single one of these furnaces. Now, how we're able to do that is we are detecting whenever an item goes into the hopper, and when every single hopper is full, we then unlock the hoppers, letting the hoppers um, let their fuel source flow straight into the furnace. And by doing that, we are able to make sure that every single um, furnace has the exact same amount of fuel sources. Now, this system is infinitely expandable, so it can be either 3 furnaces long or 27 furnaces long. This system will handle it. How it's able to do that is each one of these systems runs independently as a single slice, and they are simply connected with a bunch of redstone dust. And so on the top, of course, is where all your input's going to be. So, for example, if we're smelting gold ore, it's going to go in the top into the top slot of the furnace. Now, around the back is where we are actually putting in our fuel. So what this system is doing is it's seeing, does the item make it all the way into the furnace? And you can see this hopper's locked, but this hopper isn't because only one of the furnaces got the fuel. So even when this furnace is completely done smelting, it knows that this furnace over here to the left has one fewer fuel than this one, so it's going to lock this until the other one gets filled. Now if, for example, I put a bunch of different fuel in, so you can see I have oak going in, and I have spruce, and then I put some birch, you'll see the system does not fully unlock, so you can see the birch is kind of just stuck in there. So this is also where the 2.0 version comes in. So if we look in the furnace, you can see that there's an oak plank in there, and that is causing this um, birch not be able to come through and to make sure that no other birch planks or any other fuel source comes in we are locking the hopper which means no matter how many times the hopper minecart comes over no fuel is going in but it also means that that birch planks never leaving the hopper going into the furnace so what the system does is every time the hopper minecart goes there and back it will rest in the starting position where there's a clock slash timer and it'll quickly flash on these lights real quick and now give time for the birch if planks to flow out and into the furnace themselves and now of course turn off these comparators which will therefore let the entire system reset if every single one of these hoppers are empty this gives the entire system basically an overflow protection and this also gives the entire system an easy automatic reset in case for some reason the system is broken now because we are using redstone signal strength here we cannot have an item that has a redstone signal strength greater than one so this does mean that you cannot use um, any type of wooden tools or lava buckets when it comes to fueling these furnaces. But any type of plank scaffolding or sticks or whatever type of fuel source you want like that will work. The only fuel source that you might want to use that this system does not work with is lava buckets. And that is just a quick overview on how this entire machine functions. And if you guys like this video, go ahead and do just that. Give it a like. It lets me know that you guys like videos like this. And if you do this tutorial or you just really like some of my content, give me a subscribe. It lets me know you guys like what I'm doing. And I'll try to make some more content just like this. Now, also down below in the description of this video is a materialist and world download of this build right here. So if you're interested, that's where it is. Enjoy. Check it out. But with that, let's start the tutorial. Now, before building, you need to make sure you have room for this entire system. Now, I've done my best to make sure that all the redstone is either behind or underneath it. And this entire system is at least six plus the number of furnaces you have long. So you can see I have 14 furnaces here. So that means that the entire length is 20. If you were to have eight furnaces here, your entire length would be 14 and so on. Just like that, the entire height from the very bottom blocks where those repeaters are sitting on is 10 blocks tall. That's going all the way up to our input chest. And then when it comes to how wide the entire system is, you can see it is seven wide. That's 
all the way from the back block all the way to our front furnaces. So first, before setting too much up, we have our input chest all the way up here. We have a redstone lamp. This is where our, our actual lever is going to be to turn on and off the entire system. We got three blocks here, two blocks underneath that we have a double chest. This is our output chest. Now next, we need to figure out how many furnaces you want in your system. Now, I would ideally recommend you guys to pick a number that 64 can be fit into, because that is how many items is in one stack of blocks that you are smelting. So whether that is 2, 4, 8, 16, or 32, or even 64 furnaces, just pick a nice number that um, a stack of blocks can go into, and that's the number of furnaces you are going to have in your system. Because this entire system is simply the same thing being mirrored over and over again, I'm only going to have a total of four furnaces here, and then simply, if you want to have more than that, you simply have to replicate each step as many times as you have furnaces. Now, on each of these hoppers, we are going to have one furnace, and this can be a normal furnace, a smoker, or blast furnace. Then coming in from the back, we are going to have our fuel lines, and then we are going to have one hopper going straight into the top of all the furnaces as well. And now it is time to start working on all the redstone to make this entire furnace or super smelter smart. So what we're going to do is not break these hoppers right here. Instead, take some blocks. We'll have one block on the side of our fuel hopper. Coming down underneath it, I'm going to put a temporary block. Then we are going to have four solid blocks coming straight out like this. Now on top of each of these, we are going to have a comparator into some redstone dust. We'll have a repeater, lean into some more redstone dust. Now underneath this, straight down from our, our first bit of redstone dust, we'll have a dropper facing down. We'll come down another two blocks. And then right here, we'll all have a dropper, and this dropper needs to be facing straight up. Now you want to have an item in your top dropper, and this needs to be a junk item that you don't care about because you will never see this item again. Now on the side closest to your furnace array, we are going to put a solid block. And we're going to have one more solid block right here. We will have a comparator, and this, on the edge of this block, we will have a redstone torch right here. Now on the other side of our two droppers here, we are going to have another solid block. Right here, we will have a comparator. This comparator is going to be going straight into a block. And right on top of this block, we will have a redstone torch. And this is the bulk of the redstone of the entire smelter. All that's left to do is to repeat this entire system for every single one of your furnaces. And just like that, we have the brains of the entire system complete. If I was to simply put in an oak wood into every single one of these hoppers, you'll see it'll, it will lock right behind it. And just like that, all this redstone dust should turn off. And now, by using this redstone dust, we need to reset the entire system. How we're going to do this is coming off, we're going to come off one block, redstone dust, we'll have a torch coming down, come down two blocks, we'll have another bit of redstone dust, with one more torch. This torch is going to come straight down to one more bit of redstone dust. Redstone dust is going to be part of a little V here. V is going to have a repeater right in the center of it. And then in all these spaces right here, you're going to have two blocks coming straight out like this. Now on these blocks that you have placed, we are going to have a repeater facing forward in every single one of them. And some redstone dust connecting all the repeaters together. Now in front of all the repeaters, you are going to have a solid block. And then on the top of all of these solid blocks, you need to have some redstone torches. Now if coming back up, you see that still one of your torches is on, meaning that your entire system has not reset correctly. All you gotta do is simply break this torch, place it again, and that should make sure that all your droppers are all in the same track. And if you just look right here, all your torches here in a line should all be off meaning that your entire has reset itself. Okay, so now we're going to start working on the safety net. Now this safety net, basically what it is doing is if for some reason the fuel cannot go into the furnace, whether there's a different fuel source in there or it's completely full, the fuel source will get stuck in this hopper. Now what this system is basically doing is this item will never leave the hopper because it is locked by that torch. And the system will never reset because the comparator detects there is an item in there. So every so often, the entire system 
will turn on and off the um, hoppers, giving it time for that item to flow out of the hopper if it can. And if it can go into the furnace and of course be used as fuel, then it will. Basically what the system is doing is it is resetting the entire thing anytime there's a clog or multiple clogs in these hoppers. So coming over to our system, we are going to place one piston on the side of every single torch right here. Got one piston. I'm going to do one for every single furnace I have. And on the final one, I'll have an obsidian. And that's to make sure that none of the pistons will ever move. Next, I'm going to grab some blocks. And coming right on the other side of each of the pistons, I'm going to have some redstone dust. And the, this redstone dust is going to connect straight into each of the pistons. And we're going to have a torch right on top of every single one of those pistons as well. Okay, so next we are going to start putting in all our rail lines. So off the side of each of these hoppers, on the opposite end of our input, we're going to have the box come out another two blocks. Then on the input, you have already put in three blocks here. Then we're going to have a glass block on the lower one. And then two more solid blocks. And when it comes to placing track in Minecraft Bedrock, you can't just simply place two tracks right here side by side. Because what it's going to do is it's going to redirect your tracks just like this, which is not what we want. So what we're going to do right instead, if I just quickly break all this track, you're going to make the lower track first, and we're going to make it one bigger than it is supposed to be. So you can see this is, track is going to be two um, rails longer than it's supposed to be. So we're going to have two powered rails, normal rail, detector rail, and power rails along all of these, and three more right here. Then when we are doing the top rail, so we have all powered rails here, you can see that the rail line does not connect with each other. Now once you have placed in all the rails, what you're going to do is you are going to break these end rails and simply put a block there. And that should make sure that none of your rails connect accidentally to where they're not supposed to. Now these powered rails do need to be powered all the time, so I'm just going to put a redstone block. If you want to save a little bit of redstone and simply put a block and a lever, that will work just fine, but, you know, redstone blocks, they look kind of cool, so let's use them. So now we're going to use our detector rail right here, and taking that straight through a block, we are going to have a comparator. And this comparator right here needs to be on subtract mode. That is simply going to go into a block with some redstone dust. And to avoid this redstone dust from connecting, we're going to have a solid block. Now, coming from that redstone dust, that redstone dust is going to go straight into a line, which is going to lead into... Two repeaters with each of these repeaters being on four ticks now these two repeaters are leading straight into a block there's going to lead into a line of more repeaters so we're going to have a solid block here we're going to have two repeaters here each of these repeaters needs to be on four ticks two repeaters just like that and then in the center right here we are going to have two more repeaters and these repeaters again need to be on four ticks Leading straight into our comparator. Now this redstone line also has a second purpose. So right off the side of this block, we're going to have a torch. Now just coming straight underneath, we are going to come two blocks down from that. And here we are going to have a bit of redstone dust. Now this redstone dust is going to come in a line. One more block, more redstone dust. Here we'll have a torch. This torch is going to come down an additional two blocks. We'll have redstone dust here. One more torch. We'll have one more block here with some redstone dust, and that should connect our entire clock slash timer with this final bit of redstone line down here, controlling these torches when to turn on and off. Now, we are almost done building this entire system. The only thing that is left for us to do is to actually make this on and off switch work. So this on and off switch will basically turn on and off when this we want our chest minecart to go. You see, that will launch, and then it'll come all the way back. But we need to hook this up slightly differently when it comes to this lower railroad. So for this lowered railroad, we will have a repeater here. This repeater needs to be on four ticks. That is going to be going straight into a solid block with some redstone dust. Now coming right off the side of that redstone dust, we are going to have a sticky piston. This sticky piston needs to be facing downward. Then right off the side, we will have an observer. This observer is going to go straight into some redstone dust. Then all you need to do is come right along here and on top of this rail, we're going to place a hopper. And then on the rail, we'll place a hopper minecart. And of course, the only thing that's left to do once you finish building this is to put in all your diamonds or any other item that you're smelting. Along with your fuel source, the entire system will put them into that hopper minecart. 
which is a fl quick flick of this lever. It'll launch both the minecarts back and forth, and it'll slowly and surely smelt all your diamonds down, and it'll evenly distribute all your oak planks evenly in between every single one of your furnaces. Is now, depending on how many furnaces you have in your system, you might be able to stop just there. But if you're like me and you have over 14 furnaces, then you are going to need something different. So after every 14 furnaces, we are going to run out of redstone signal strength. So after every 14, you're going to stop, leave a gap, and build your nether 14. And if you want, you can leave a gap and do another 14. And you can just have as many furnaces as you could possibly want. So how we would connect all the systems together then is all the way down here at the bottom. We would simply connect in this one block gap a repeater. And this repeater needs to be facing towards our input. And as you can see, I saved a little bit of obsidian by just sharing and have all the pistons facing towards it. Then coming all the way around to the back, you can see the redstone line here right at the top is already sharing. Now if you are extending this another 14, you already have 28 furnaces, so you have 14 14 and you want to put some more furnaces after that then what you would do is instead of just connecting up with the redstone line you would connect it up with a repeater you would also need to put one last repeater coming all the way down here and where you see that this splits off we are simply going to put solid block solid block with a repeater here and that's going to split right off this redstone torch and again if you are going to have this go even longer so you already have 14 14 and you want to go even further then off of this final redstone, off of this final block where there's redstone, and have another solid block with a repeater, and there will be an empty gap for this right here. And that way you never have to repeat this a purple circuit right here a second time. And of course, you are going to obviously want to hook up your hopper lines with each other, and then in these rest of these empty spaces, you can obviously put any sort of block you want here, and then all that's really left to do after that is to of course connect your rail line, over top of the other parts of your furnace so that your entire furnace ray will act as one gigantic super smelter. And that is going to wrap it up for this tutorial. If you enjoyed, hit the like and subscribe button. But this has been Rocket Builder, and I'll see you all in the next one.